The communications watchdog Ofcom is urging technology firms to do more to make the online world safer for women and girls. A snapshot of the UK's online habits compiled by the regulator found that women were more likely than men to come across harmful content and were more likely to be distressed by it. Zoe Kleinman reports. 24-year-old Scots folk singer Iona Fife uses social media to promote her music and she gets a lot of online abuse. She says the comments can be relentless, distressing and scary. But when it's a prolonged, um, extended pylon, it really does get to you. You question your self-worth, you question your talent, you question if you're good enough. I think that's really sad. A report out today from the regulator Ofcom has found that women in the UK experience more abuse than men online, are more distressed by it and are less likely to feel they can speak freely on the internet. Iona wants to keep her voice. I don't think we should be bullied out the room. I've worked really hard to create a platform for myself, whether that be for music or for voice in my opinions, but it seems that a lot of people just want to tear us down. Dame Melanie Dawes is the head of Ofcom and she says the tech companies need to do more to protect their users. Too many companies prioritise growth and revenues over user safety and don't actually think enough about the impact on the frontline user who's actually on their service. Once the online harms bill gets through Parliament, Ofcom will have the power to issue big fines if the tech firms don't act quickly to remove harmful content. It's really important that they get women's voices in there up front when services are being designed rather than trying to retrofit safety later when it's much, much harder. Ofcom's Media Habits report gives a colourful snapshot of the life of UK adults online. We spend an average of four hours a day online, mostly on our phones. Our most used apps are Facebook, WhatsApp, Messenger and Instagram. Nine out of ten of us use Amazon and two and a half million of us are still playing the ten-year-old mobile game Candy Crush Saga. The social networks do have a number of tools for finding and removing harmful content, including human moderators, automated systems, and of course there's also the block button. But Ofcom, and plenty of the internet users it's spoken to, want more to be done. Zoe Kleinman, BBC News. And our technology editor, Zoe, uh, joins us now. Good to have you with us in the studio, uh, Zoe. Um, what we're hearing in this report from Ofcom we know a lot of this already, don't we, that the online world isn't safe for women and girls. I mean, it's not safe for lots of people, is it? But it, particularly for women and girls. Um, but how significant is it that Ofcom is saying this? I think this is the really important thing, actually. I mean, if you're a woman, if you've had any bad experiences online, loads of us have, you might well be thinking, well, tell me something I don't know. But actually, the fact that it's come uh, to the attention of Ofcom officially through Ofcom's own report is really important because Ofcom's going to become the regulator of social media. There's a, an online harms bill going through Parliament at the moment, and it's going to give Ofcom enormous powers to really crack down on on the companies who for, for, for not dealing with this sort of harmful content properly. Now, by dealing with it, they mean getting rid of it. There's going to be a really tight window in, in, um, in which they can get harmful content removed. They'll face enormous fines if they don't. They want to make executives personally responsible. Ofcom is really hoping to have a lot of teeth when it comes to uh, being able to police this. And so finally having, you know, an organisation in a position of power saying, right, we can see this is happening and we are able to do something about it should be quite empowering. Yeah, but the, the, the fines, the sanctions, etc. are all very well. But, you know, can the technology companies really police this? They have failed to police it so far, haven't they? And I think this is one of the issues. You know, for years and years and years, they kind of wanted to avoid regulation in, in as many territories as possible. And they said, leave it with us. We've got it. We, you know, we can handle it. But what we see time and time again is that it's just not being handled. It's such an enormous amount of content that they have to work through, you know, that they've just not been able to do it. I think what some people are worried about is that things are going to go the other way, actually. And you're going to see, you know, what you might consider to be censorship because they'll be a lot more cautious thinking, if they there's a massive fine, we don't want to take the chance. You know, if something potentially sounds like it could be offensive, we'll take it down. And we know there's all sorts of nuance and cultural references and things that aren't, you know, that aren't necessarily offensive in certain parts of the world or certain communities. So it is going to be a really difficult line for them to have to tread. 
What more can individuals do to protect themselves? <laughs> I mean, this is a really difficult one, isn't it? You know, there are tools out there. You can... Yeah, but you know, if you can't rely on other people to do it for you, you know, right. you, you've got to do it yourself right. sometimes, haven't you? I mean, I think, you know, the thing you can do yourself immediately is to block content and report it. You can mute accounts. You can block them from seeing your own material. Uh, you can report content. And, and it gives you a list of, you know, why you're reporting it, what kind of uh, harm is it causing. And, and you, can, you can repeatedly do that until you get an answer. It's not fail safe. And some people say, actually, blocking it isn't the answer. Just because you can't see it doesn't mean it's not there. Um, 